everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amber Westbrook and today I am making Star Butterfly's Star Purse from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. How many times can you say star in one sentence? Now I do plan on making a whole cosplay for this, but I feel like this purse needed its very own video because it's quite involved in what it took to make it. And I will be offering the pattern on my Patreon, although I did not include in the pattern the eyes or the mouth because I literally just like sewed those on myself and kind of made them up. So the purse pattern is just for the star shaped purse. And I will also be including the Star vs. the Forces of Evil seamless pattern that I create in this video. So let's get started. So the way that I like to create seamless patterns is by putting my main images in the center and then using my offset to cut them in half on both the top and the bottom. And then I add more images in the center to fill in the negative space. And that will usually create the perfect seamless pattern. Sometimes I have to go back in and check and make sure that everything still looks good once I end up you know, making it larger or smaller. Sometimes it looks a little off, but this one actually turned out really well. I was super proud of it. And then for the background, I just did a lot of like splotches of color. I color picked from different areas within what was already there, kind of made it very abstract. And then I did the same technique where I move it off screen using the offset button and then kind of evened everything out. I also lightened the color a bit and used a little bit of blur and also put a little bit of texture back there just so that it would look all really seamless and awesome and it matched up with the pattern perfectly. Okay, so once the pattern was all created, I was able to scale it down a little bit and I printed it out on 14 inch long pieces of sublimation paper. And it took about four sheets to cut out all of the lining pieces for this pattern. Now the reason that I wanted to do sublimation for the interior is because I love doing fun lining pieces. Even though it's not on the outside and nobody will see it except for me, that's what really is fun about it in my opinion is because once I like open the bag and show anybody that recognizes it be like, oh yeah, by the way, the lining too. And it's like a whole nother reveal, like a, oh, that's cool. And even if nobody saw it, I love to do fun linings because they just make the project so much more in depth like there's just so much more to it so that's what I decided to do and I used waterproof canvas for the interior because it is completely made out of polyester which is what you need to sublimate and I love the way that sublimation takes to waterproof canvas and I also love using waterproof canvas as a lining because it's very structured but it's also really easy to sew and this pattern has a lot of curves it's not just curves, they're almost like really tight curves and tight points. And I know that that is super challenging for a lot of you. So another tip that I have is do not use what I used. I used relatively thick gold vinyl and I would not recommend it. So if I were to do it again, I would probably just do it in yellow waterproof canvas. So I have waterproof canvas on the outside, waterproof canvas on the lining, so much easier. I also put uh, some lightweight interfacing in the vinyl and that was completely unnecessary because it was very stiff as it was. But if you were to make this pattern and do a thinner fabric, I would recommend putting some sort of interfacing. So basically to start this pattern, I'm just gonna sew the zipper in. I'm gonna sew the zipper face down to one of the zipper panels and I'm gonna base at 1 8 inch and then I'm gonna place the lining over that whole thing, lining up both edges and I'm gonna sew along this at 3 eighths of an inch. Once that's done, I flip both the lining and the top fabric back and I sew a top stitch, repeating on both sides, and then I'm gonna sew around the entire panel, and this is gonna create the zipper unit. Then I'm gonna take the D-ring straps, fold both edge to the center on the long side, and sew along the edges at 1 eighth of an inch. Then I'm gonna cut this in half, add both of my D-rings, one to each, and I'm gonna just clip these and set them aside. Then I'm gonna pull out the zipper panel that I just created, and I'm going to clip one on each side of these. So the D-ring is gonna go in towards the center, and it's gonna be lined up with the raw edges of each side of the zipper. Then I'm gonna take my side gusset, and I'm gonna line that up short end to short end with the right sides together, sandwiching that D-ring in between these two pieces. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and I'm going to do the same exact thing to the lining side, matching up right side to right side with short sides together on the lining side. Then I'm going to very carefully take this over to the machine and I'm going to sew down that short side, catching all of this in with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to take both of those pieces and I'm going to fold them away from the seam I just sewed and I'm going to top stitch along that same seam at a 1 8 inch seam allowance so that it looks really nice and it also stays down. This also gives it a little bit of extra security for that D-ring strap. Once that step is done, I'm going to go ahead and fold over the bottom part of this entire gusset and I'm going to match up short side to short side the same way that I did before sandwiching that D-ring in between with right sides together. And then I'm going to flip the entire unit over and fold over the lining side to match short side to short side on the lining side as well clipping that and making sure that it's all lined up. Then just go ahead and sew at the 3 8 inch seam allowance just like you did on the others, making sure you catch that D-ring in there really well. And once that's sewn, flip it so that the entire thing is one big loop and you're going to go ahead and top stitch the same way you did on the other side at 1 8 inch seam allowance. Then just go ahead and baste around both of the long sides so that you have one all together unit. Once your entire unit is done, you're going to go ahead and baste the front and the front lining and the back and the back lining together. So this basically is creating your front and your back. So you're just going to baste at 1 8 inch around the entire star with the front and the lining wrong sides together. So this is a spot, as I mentioned, I did not include in the pattern. I basically just cut two circles out of waterproof canvas that was white and I used two big buttons and then I used a very tight zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and I sewed around the eyes, I sewed the little smile in black and then I sewed the buttons on like regular buttons. So it really wasn't that exciting and I did not include it in the pattern but if you're making the pattern with Star Butterfly, this is the spot where you would make that step. So once I had all of my pieces ready to go, I marked the center top and the center bottom of both my front and my back star pieces. I also marked the center of the zipper piece and the center bottom of the zipper gusset as well. Then I just lined up the top and bottom of the entire zipper gusset right sides together with all of the many, many, many edges on the star. And my trick was every time I had to go around the point of a star, I would clip into the gusset and make sure that it was able to spread and I made sure that I sewed a little bit past these so none of the clips would make it to the front of the bag. But this made it so much easier to sew this, I can't even tell you. Once all of this was clipped, I took it over to my sewing machine, definitely using a zipper foot so that I could get around all those many, many corners. And then comes the hardest part of the bag, which is just repeating that on the other side, matching the top and bottom. I recommend sewing with the gusset part facing up so that you could kind of use your zipper foot as a guide while you sew. This is the only way I could get through this. Now a word about how I finished off the inside. So I really don't like using binding that much and so I usually will use like stretchy elastic like fold over elastic the kind that you put on like edges of swimsuits and bodysuits and different things like that. So that's what I used. You are welcome to use anything you want, any kind of binding that you wish. Sometimes if I have internal binding, I will literally just go over the, all the edges with my serger and call it a day. But for this one, because I used such thick fabric and it was so difficult to go around the corners, I ended up just using white fold over elastic so that I could kind of stretch it around each corner and it was really easy to just get all of those little pieces in place. I don't know that I've seen other people do that before, but I like to do the easiest thing that is available, so that is what I chose to do. But in the pattern it says use double fold bias tape or an, any other type of binding that you prefer. Some people use like twill, some people use like their own pre-made bias tape that matches the lining fabric. Whatever you choose is totally fine here. And the best news is, once you finish your binding, it is time to turn the bag inside out and attach your strap. Now, mine was a little bit hard to turn out, but let me tell you, I was so excited to see the whole thing done. Also, in the pattern, I did not include 
pre-made straps because I love using chains and pearls and all different kinds of pre-made straps that I get from online. I got this pearl strap from Timu and I love it so much. I feel like it went perfectly with this bag. So it's just a crossbody strap that you just hook onto both sides. It's amazing. I love it. Don't regret it. And if you want to know how to make pre-made straps, I'm sure there's tons of tutorials out there to make your own straps to go with this if you want the fabric to match or anything like that. So here is the finished bag. I actually have been using this bag for a few days and it is really cute. I love carrying it around. It's like super adorable and it does in fact fit my phone in it and the zippers i love how cute the little zipper detail is i would highly highly recommend that when you sew this you use a double zipper one on each side instead of just one over because i will often have the zippers at the very top and then the best part is is that when you open it you can literally just do it down both sides and then there's like the little peek in and you can see here there is my lining I absolutely love that this is lined with that and I love also that it has the extra stability of having binding because it just keeps the star shape perfect and you can see it just retains its shape really well even though the folders are on the side it retains its shape super well partly because the fabric is thick so you could replicate that with interfacing and partly because it has the binding which holds its shape really really well so there she is the star versus the forces of evil star purse I really hope that you enjoyed going on this journey with me. If you want to get the pattern or if you want to get the seamless pattern both will be available on my patreon so feel free to head on over there with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.